Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about my outlook for the stock market. Are we going to see another stock market crash uh, coming in May or in this summer? If you're worried about this financial crisis or just want to learn trading strategies that will work in a bear market, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So I've been getting a lot of questions about there's the old proverb, uh, sell in May and go away, which is basically an investment strategy where you sell all your stocks on May 1st or April 30th, something like that, and then you don't buy back in until around Halloween. Now, there are good, uh, there are good quantitative reasons for this. If we look at a chart of uh, monthly returns grouped by month, this only goes through, this one happens only to go through 2009, 1950 to 2009, but that I believe the basic pattern has remained the same. These are average monthly returns. And so you can see during most of the year, you get some fairly uh, big, uh, big returns. They really drop off during the summer. You can see this period from May to October has the lowest average monthly returns. And then after Halloween, as we enter the holiday season, the stock market usually has some good months as well. Uh, obviously, a lot of great big stock market crashes happened in uh, October, the uh, Great Crash of 1929 and the uh, 1987 crash. Uh, Lehman Brothers uh, went bankrupt, uh, I believe it was in September of uh, 2008. So September, October are very nasty months. They have the lowest returns. But the summer is usually a very volatile time. This was true, uh, certainly the summer of 2008 in the middle of the last uh, bear market. So on top of that, we've been getting some bearish signals. We just got a death cross on the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs. Uh, you can see it right here where the blue line is crossing below the red line. Blue line is the 50-day moving average. Red line is the 200-day moving average. When the blue line is above the red line, you tend to have better uh, stock market returns. When it crosses below, uh, it can be a whipsaw signal, it can be a fake signal, but it can also be the sign of the beginning of a strong downtrend. And when, when you look at the sort of fundamental backdrop of the crisis we're in, uh, where it's been very difficult for the Fed to sort of extricate us from the effects of the uh, virus, this makes a lot of sense. Now, tech stocks have been the strongest ones standing. Uh, they're the last to get a uh, death cross. But if we scroll out, we can see that uh, the Dow Jones Industrials, DIA, is in a downtrend uh, red line, uh, blue line before it below the red line. And the uh, S&P 500 has been for a while, crossed over in March. And finally, the small caps, the IWM, this is the Russell 2000 ETF, they, uh, they happen to be the weakest. Now, if we look, if we look within the S&P 500, almost all the sectors are extremely weak, except for tech. Obviously, energy has been very weak given the... Uh, the, uh, the weakness in crude oil, XLE, these would be all the oil majors, all the oil companies. And then the, uh, the financials as well. It's hard to have an economic recovery or have a bull market <clears throat> if the financials are not participating. They're extremely weak. And this makes sense if you're a restaurant, uh, you're getting ready to open back up or you're still closed. Even if you open back up, you probably won't be able to pack as many tables in due to uh, virus restrictions. And so you're going to have trouble... Uh, paying your landlord, uh, maybe you'll ask for a rent reduction, and then your landlord won't be able to pay uh, his full mortgage, the guy who owns the, uh, the the commercial building where your restaurant is, and because he falls behind on his mortgage or is unable to pay and maybe defaults, then the bank starts to have problems. So everything trickles down to the financial system. And uh, so we can see that the XLF is still extremely weak in spite of everything that the Fed has done and in spite of all the fiscal stimulus. So this is obviously still very bearish. And the fact that tech stocks are now joining in, they're still the, as, as strong as uh, any other area, but we may be seeing sort of a pattern of uh, higher highs, I'm sorry, um, lower highs and lower lows. And that suggests we may see something like this. We've had a very strong, what I believe is a bear market bounce. And uh, because we're now making a lower high combined with the death cross, the big leg down, this is typically the big leg. Uh, if you're doing some sort of Elliott wave, uh, it could be something like one, two, and three. And if I remember correctly, that last wave is the really big one down. So we definitely have the potential for that going into the summer. Now, it's interesting where the NASDAQ turned around. Um, so, uh, well, let, we can start with the NASDAQ. 
Here is the NASDAQ back in 2008, the beginning of the last bear market. You can see that we got a first uh, a big move down and then we also got a bounce. And that bounce topped out right around this uh, Fibonacci level that's very significant. Uh, it's the 61.8% 61, 61 level. Basically what I do is I take this Fibonacci retracement indicator, I stick it at the top of where the, 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 uh, the all-time high was, and then I, I stick it at the bottom of where the, uh, where the market bounced. And in 2008, tech stocks were very strong as well in the first in the first quarter they bounced uh, better than the higher than the market did or more strongly than the market did but they also topped out around this line here the 60 uh, 61 and a half 61.8 percent uh, fib line and then if we if we scroll out we can see that was really uh, just everything was just getting started and there was really bad times uh, ahead now we're seeing something similar in the um, in the s p 500 right now we're topping out uh, at that same level that 0.618 percent level again i'm just measuring from the high to the most recent low uh, to that march low and it's very it's it's very interesting that this happens uh this is a little bit voodoo but when people are, are uncertain about policy response or they are, they're uncertain about the course that this virus is going to take is it going to come back in the fall even more deadly uh, will we have a vaccine in time or antivirals in time? When people don't know the answers to these very difficult questions, the markets tend to trade fairly technically. And so that's uh, probably why we're seeing this bounce off of uh, the 61.8% level, as well as we're seeing, starting to see earnings come in and uh, a lot of companies just dropping their earnings guidance completely. Bad news out of Apple, bad news out of Amazon, going to lose a lot of money. Uh, bad news out of Berkshire Hathaway, which we'll talk about in a second. And so we have uh, we have that Fibonacci retracement level. It looks like we're we're falling off of that right as we enter the sell in May uh, months. Now we had something similar happen in the Great Crash of 1929. Here I'm looking at the Dow Jones Industrial because the Nasdaq and the uh, I don't believe the S&P was around as an index uh, either. Um, you had a similar move where you had a first move down from the highs of 1929. You had the great October crash. Uh, the market found a bottom at the beginning of uh, November. It bounced going into the, uh, into the new year, topped out around the 50% Fib retracement level. And then you can see that it really began to go off a cliff as you entered May of 1930 and the Great Depression uh, really got started. So that's a precedent for these sort of strong uh, bull market, uh, I'm sorry, strong bear market rallies, a, a, a strong rally within the context of a larger larger bear market. Uh, here's an uh, indicator that Vulcan Trader, you can check out his YouTube channel, likes to look at. Um, this is the S&P 500. I'm looking at monthly bars and a 50-day moving average. You can see that the uh, this 50-day moving average line served as a nice support level back in uh, 2015. 2016 uh, as well as uh, the fourth quarter of 2018 and it would be bearish if we get a close below it we did get a close below it at the um, in March uh, of this year then kind of a, a rebound above it uh, but this can mean um, you can see something similar happened in 2008 where we closed uh, below it and then things really started getting um, going badly. Now we did were able to get this bounce because of all the fiscal and monetary stimulus and so any close below this 50-day moving average uh, would be extremely bearish. So it's definitely definitely something we're watching but you can see that the smooth trend of the last uh, 10, 9, 10 years really has been violated here and we've we've sort of been in a, in a sideways market really since the beginning of uh, 2018 and um, we were able to make some marginal new highs but we could see this as a topping or sideways pattern, a period of high volatility, sideways trading, and um, and real real choppiness. It's a it's a much more difficult market to trade than than uh, 2018, 2019 were. Now this is this is surprising given the fiscal stimulus that's been thrown at this over tri two trillion dollars in the CARES Act, which we've we've spoken about, uh, and. Um, so two trillion there, and then a few trillion added to the Fed's balance sheet. The Fed is basically printing money out of nowhere, ex nihilo, 
and buying uh, buying treasuries, buying mortgage-backed securities, buying munis, and even buying junk bonds. And you can see in the last uh, quarter, in the first quarter of 2000, the Fed's balance sheet went from $4 trillion to uh, now at about $6.7 trillion. So call it a $2.7 trillion plus another uh, $2 trillion. So close to $5 trillion in stimulus. And what's just extremely shocking about that is with $5 trillion in stimulus and a lot of job owning from the Fed, we are only back to, uh, we haven't even been able to get above the 200 day moving average. And um, it's just hard to imagine what it would take to pump everything back up to uh, to the top. If 5 trillion only gets you back uh, to where we were, let's say in uh, uh, end of February, beginning of March when the virus scare was first getting started. And so some very bearish, uh, bearish formations there. We just heard from Warren Buffett over the weekend uh, yesterday at the Berkshire meeting, which was held completely online, that he's dumped all the airlines. He thinks the business has fundamentally changed. So for those of you who've been asking me if you should buy the airlines, uh, I'll defer to Mr. Buffett here. Uh, he basically, too many airplanes, too many airlines for the, uh, for the drop in traffic that we'll probably see going forward. It's gonna take many, many years to recover. That combined with Buffett saying that he hasn't seen anything attractive, he hasn't been doing deals. Part of this, is simply because the Fed has been stepping in and doing the kind of deals, the kind of financing that Buffett would have done in the past. And the Fed basically can print free money. They're not rational economic actors. And so they can step, step in front of Buffett and they can fund the banks, they can fund, um, they can buy junk bonds, for example. And this was the sort of stuff that Buffett was, was uh, issuing debt letting people borrow money from Berkshire in 2008, 2009. And this has traditionally been a good sign of a bear market bottom. But Buffett, is, Buffett and his partner, his business partner, Charlie Munger, have been very mum and uh, basically been saying that uh, the phone hasn't been ringing and they don't see a lot of good deals out there. So combined with these technicals, I think this is a, a, bearish, uh, a bearish constellation of facts going into going into the summer. Uh, for stocks to move higher, the Fed is gonna to have to print a lot more money. And the two assets that will really uh, benefit from this the most are gold. I like the gold miners here. If we look at the uh, GDX is the ETF for that. I think this is a multi-year hold. I, I don't happen to own it. Uh, I, I'll tell you what I own in a second. But I think GDX does really well. Uh, GLD is the ETF for gold. I don't like it as much as physical gold itself. Um, you just don't know if the custodian really has those bars of gold and uh, it, you're basically owning a gold IOU. So if you're able to get your hands on physical gold, gold coins, uh, gold bars, which are a little more expensive, uh, or these, uh, these gold stocks, GDX, uh, the two big ones in this index are Newmont, NEM, and ABX, which is Barrett Gold. Very strong looking charts. You can see this so different from what we're seeing in... Uh, in the S&P 500 or even in tech stocks, which both don't look nearly as, as good. Uh, and then obviously Bitcoin, which I talk about all the time, uh, it's sort of the punchline of every video, it seems like these days. Bitcoin's chart is not quite as good as gold, uh, but we have the halving coming up in just a week from now, roughly a week, May 11th, May 12th, and it's been showing uh, amazing, amazing strength. We also had a, a death cross in Bitcoin. I I think this is more of a sideways motion. Uh, if we scroll out, we can see that the the uh, the market's been basically basically trading sideways in a range. And so we had a we had a death cross back in back of last year, and um, we had another one. So it basically these death crosses would appear to be sort of contrarian signals at this point. So the the, the money printing that the Fed's going to need to do to pump the S and P back up to where it where it was, especially with baby boomers retiring and the, the whole US economy depending on the stock market. The stock market is, is heading down unless the Fed prints gazillions and gazillions of dollars. And that's a technical term, gazillion. So this is why gold, uh, uh, scarce assets, uh, they can function as a store of value. So coastal real estate, uh, Picassos, anything, that's, uh, anything that you can't print and the Fed cannot print gold, and they certainly cannot print uh, Bitcoin. Neither, neither can they stop it. I'll stick some videos 
in the links below, in the description notes below, so you can learn more about Bitcoin. And you can read, uh, whenever I do a video like this, I get all the common critiques. The government's going to ban it. It's funny money. It's a tulip bubble. It's a Ponzi scheme. These sort of things I've addressed in other videos. Uh, so feel free to, to check those out if you have questions about that. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how to uh, trade a bear market, I'd encourage you to check out my course, uh, Bear Market Trading Strategies, as well as my other courses, Swing Trading with Options, uh, Learn to Trade Options Like a Pro, my flagship course, Learn to Trade Stocks Like a Pro, uh, the Bear Market course. Uh, there's a futures trading course in here as well as a crypto Bitcoin course. So if you enjoy my teaching style, and you have some free time now, you're tired of binging on Netflix, this is a great time to really uh, step it up and educate yourself. You can obviously you can watch all my free YouTube videos and there's just a tremendous amount of, amount of material there that's available for free. Uh, but after you've watched all of them, if you still want more and you wanna go really deep, I would suggest these online courses. You can get unlimited access to all these courses so you don't need to choose between them. If this is something that interests you, you can go to this page. I'll put a link in the description notes below. You can click on any of these boxes to see the list of lectures. And then if you're interested, you can go to the bottom, click get it now. And I've got a special coupon for you. Normally, this is just $125 tuition for 30 days access. Uh, but because we're in a recession, I want to give you a better deal. If you click have a coupon code and type in YT, as in YouTube, 99, and click the update button, they'll take $26 off. So you'll get 30 days access to all the courses for just $99. So no long-term contracts or anything. So you can cancel uh, anytime before that 30 days are up and uh, watch all the courses before then and you won't be won't be charged again. I'm also constantly adding new courses and lectures. So if there's something you'd like to see there, after you become a subscriber, just hit the contact button, which will appear after you become a subscriber. Let me know what you'd like to see added. I'm currently working on a day trading course uh, as well as a quant trading course. So those are, those are in the works as soon as I can finish them. Thanks a lot for listening. Please hit that subscribe and like button if you haven't done so already. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Hope you're all staying well and I'll see you in the next video.